Hi hey guys, the colder days are really a fact here now. So again, a new pattern of a nice warm sweater. This Ayla sweater is super easy to make and adapt to any size. We work from bottom to top, for the front and back panel, and also for the sleeves. The pattern is in US terms, and the free rhythm pattern can be found on my blog. The link to my blog is in the description box down below. Give me a thumbs up to let me know if you like this pattern. If you are new to my channel and you like what you see, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss another video. And if you have a request for a tutorial or a question, let me know in the comments down below. I used for this sweater five skeins of a number four medium worsted weight yarn. I made this sweater with a local yarn, but you can use any number four yarn you like. Mine is 100 grams, 200 meters, and it is a 75 acrylic and 25% wool. The recommended hook uh, is a 4.5 mm, but I'm going to work with a 6 mm for the borders and an 8 mm for the sweater. My sweater is in the size small to medium and I used 5 balls. If you make a larger size, take one ball extra for each size larger. So, let's begin. We start the sweater with the front panel and we start with the band and for the band we use a 6mm crochet hook. We work the band first, then work the sweater on top and then make a neckline. That makes that part one more time for your back panel and then we make the sleeves also from the cuff up to the top. So let's start with the band. So take your 6mm crochet hook and then make a slip knot on your hook. And then chain 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. In the second chain from the hook, so here's your first, and this is your second. In the second chain from the hook, you insert your hook and make a single crochet. Like this. Then insert in the next, make a single crochet, and make a single crochet in every stitch across. So at the end of this row, you should have 10 single crochet stitches. Like this. For row two and for every row for the band, we chain one, turn your work, and then you see here in every stitch a front loop and a back loop, a front loop and a back loop, a front loop and a back loop. So the V's and then the front loop of the V and the back loop of the V. We insert only in the back loops. So this is your chain one, so this one we skip. And in this first stitch, you insert your hook in the back loop only. So not on the two loops, but only in the back loop. Then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. In the next stitch, you see the front, the front loop and the back loop. We insert in the back loop only. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. So the front loop and the back loop. We insert in the back loop only. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. We do that for the whole row. Insert in the back loop and make a single crochet. 
insert in the back loop, make a single crochet. Insert in the back loop, single crochet. Until the end of the row. And this is the repeat. So repeat row two for as many rows as you need to finish your band. So the band has worked from one side to the other side and the sweater has worked at the side of the band upwards. So let me show you. Here yeah, my band is done. So work single crochets in the back loop only all the way to the other side. And how do you know when your band is done? If you have your the widest part of your body, if that is your breast area or your hips, it depends on how long you want your sweater. But measure, let me show you really quick. If you have your, I'm not the best drawer, but let me try. Like this, if you measure from this side to this side, over your breast, all the way around, and then divide that number by two, and then you know how long your starting band should be. If you want a, a longer sweater, so your band must fit around your hips, and your hips are the widest part of your body, then measure around your hips. If you want your sweater shorter, then measure around your breast. So measure around the widest part of your body, the breast area or the hips, and then divide that number by two, and then you know how long you should make your starting band. So keep working until you have as many rows as you need to make the length you need. And you see here, it gives a nice ribbing by working in the back loops only. And then if your band is long enough, then I'll show you how to work your sweater on top. So keep working in the back loop only, chain one, turn your work. And in every back loop, a single crochet and you have 10 stitches in every row and then if your band is the size you want then I'll meet you back my band is done I made 52 rows to create this band now we start making the pattern along the side of the band and you see here how it looks like if you want stripes like me then you can choose a self-striped yarn like I have or you can use two kinds of yarn and then um, switch color every couple of rows you can play with that and I switch to my 8 millimeter crochet hook So I remove my six, put it out of the way, and then we start with the clusters. And every cluster is one single crochet, two double crochet in the same stitch. So that's always the same. So I ended my last row of ribbing here, then chain one and turn your work. So you have the top of your work on top and then insert in this ribbing and you can you see a hole here let me uh, zoom in a bit you see a hole here so you can insert in this hole but if you work your stitches there you create a hole in your work as well 
So I like to insert in the stitch below. So a little bit lower than where you should normally insert. So uh, for example here. Then pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So make a single crochet. Then yarn over, insert in the same spot, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Make a double crochet. Yarn over again, insert in the same spot, and make a double crochet. So a single crochet and two double crochet. And this we weave that in later. And then you need to eyeball where to place your clusters. And I like to place them a little bit lower in the work than where you should place it normally to avoid holes in your work. I made a total of um, 18 clusters of single crochet to double crochet. And in the last stitch, or at the end, we make just one single crochet. So eyeball it a little bit how far you place them apart. I see here the ribbing and here a ribbing, and then I make this in front of the ribbing and then jump to the next ribbing and then make it just after the ribbing. So place them evenly spread. And I made 18 clusters, but if your band is longer, then you need more clusters. If your band is shorter, then you need uh, less clusters. So let me show you the clusters one more time. So this is my first, and then I jump from here to this one, and then I'll insert here. So make a single crochet, yarn over. Insert in the same spot, make a double crochet, yarn over, insert in the same spot again, and make another double crochet. So that's your second cluster. Then jump, insert, single crochet, yarn over, insert in the same spot, make a double crochet, Yarn over, insert in the same spot again, and make another double crochet. So it looks like this. And you see there are no big holes where you place your stitches. If you think this is nice, then you can also place your stitches right on top. But yeah, I think it's nicer to place them a little bit lower so you don't have big holes. But that's fine either way. So jump to the next and then insert, pull up a loop and single crochet. Yarn over, double crochet in the same spot. Yarn over again, double crochet in the same spot. So here you have another cluster done. Then jump to another spot, single crochet, double crochet, and double crochet, all in the same, all in the same space. So we now have five. Repeat this all the way across until you have half an inch left, and then I'll meet you back. So insert, make a single crochet, yarn over, insert to the same stitch, double crochet, and another double crochet in the same spot. So repeat making your clusters all the way across until you have half an inch left and then I'll meet you back. Okay, I finished my 18 clusters and I have about half an inch, one centimeter left. And then in the last row, a little bit below, we make a single crochet to end row one. 
then chain one turn your work and then we start row two and row two is the repeat row for the whole pattern so we always chain one at the end of a row and then turn your work and then in this first single crochet you see that is a little bit big hole so it's easy to find in this first stitch we make a cluster so a single crochet and two double crochet it's one and another one in the same single crochet so a single crochet and two double crochet in this chain one um, in this single crochet then we have our next cluster our first cluster actually this was our single crochet uh, at the end of round one and we make clusters in every single crochet all the way across so you see here this is your double crochet this is a double crochet and here is a single crochet and the single crochets have all a, all have a little bit bigger hole than the Uh, then the double crochet so here is our next single crochet so insert in that stitch make a single crochet and two double crochet like this then go to the next double crochet double crochet and here is your next single crochet you see this hole where to insert your hook so insert in the single crochet and make a single crochet and two double crochet all in this same stitch like this then jump to the next single crochet so skip the two double crochets and then in this single crochet we make a single crochet and two double crochets like this so this is your repeat throughout the whole pattern so every row we make a chain one turn your work and then in every single crochet of that uh, of the row below we make a, another cluster so a single crochet and two double crochets so keep working row two until your work is um, reaching your collarbone so if you hold your work in front of your body and you keep the band where you want the band and then place it in front of your body then when you reach your collarbones then I'll meet you back so keep working row after row and then if you reach your collarbones I'll show you how to move on when I hold my work in front of my body then my the top of my uh, sweater touches my collarbones the bottom of my collarbone so it is time to finish the top and you have to determine where how big you want your neckline that's personal so if you want a small hole for your uh, for your neck then make it a little bit smaller if you want a um, more wider space for your head then make it a little bit wider i've crocheted 33 rows to reach this point so maybe you need a little bit more or you make your sweater longer or shorter that's totally fine just crochet as many rows as you need to reach the bottom of your collarbone so for the next step we determine how big you want your neck hole we have 18 clusters so half of the 18 is 9 so 9 on this side and 9 on this side so this is exactly the middle then you count to the outside and I want I want 8 clusters to create my neckline if you want less then make less that's totally fine but keep in mind that there will be a little ribbing around the color as well so then you lose a little bit of space but you can also leave out the ribbing and wear it just like this 
So decide the width of your neck hole and then take a stitch marker and put the stitch marker in the single crochet between two clusters. So I have five clusters on this side, so exactly one, two, three, four, five clusters on this side as well. And put in the stitch marker to mark that spot. And then go to your the end of the row, chain one, turn your work. And then you just make your clusters. So single crochet to double crochet until you reach the stitch marker. Very easy. Okay, I have my last cluster and now I am at the single crochet with the stitch marker and in this single crochet we make a single crochet to end our row. Then chain one, turn your work. And you can make a cluster in this first single crochet, just like you did for the whole body. And a cluster stitch in every stitch across. like this And last, we make just a single crochet. We make one more row. So we make three rows like this. So this way, then one back. And now we make one row this side to finish our neckline. So chain one, turn your work. And then Make your clusters and end with a single crochet in the last stitch to finish this side. One more double crochet and then a single crochet in the last single crochet. So we can cut the yarn. Yarn over and pull through. You can take out the stitch marker. And then do the same on the other side. So we attach a yarn in the stitch with the stitch marker. So make a slip knot. This is the way I, uh, I attach my yarn. You can choose any way you like. So grab your slip knot with your hook, pull through, and chain one, and then secure. 
pull tight. And then your yarn is attached. Then in this first single crochet, so the stitch with stitch marker, you make a single crochet and a double crochet. And then in the next single crochet, a cluster. In the next, and so on until you are at the end of this row. One more. Okay, and then in the last stitch, we make a single crochet. And chain one, turn your work and work your way back. So in the first single crochet a cluster and in every single crochet across until you reach the last stitch and that stitch gets one single crochet. This pattern works up so quickly that only a couple of days work. And it's such a wonderful stitch to, cr to crochet. So end with a single crochet in the last stitch, then chain one, turn your work, and we make our last row for this panel. Just like you are used to by now. And in the last stitch, a single crochet. And then your neckline is done. You can cut your yarn and mine off. And then make exactly the same panel again. So the front and the back panel are exactly the same. So we created here. Let's assume this is your front panel, then you have to make a back panel exactly the same way. So make another one, and if you have to, then I'll meet you back. And my two panels are all done, and now it's time to make the sleeves. Okay, for the sleeves, we make a little bit longer ribbing than for the band of the two panels. Um, we make this exactly the same like the band, but then we make a longer starting chain. So for the sleeves, we chain 23. So you have 22 single crochet in every row. And therefore we use our six millimeter crochet hook again. So let's do that together. So make a slip knot on your hook. And let's begin. So chain 23. One, two, three, four. 20, 21, 22, 23. Then in the second chain from the hook. So here, yes, this is your first. So the loop on your hook doesn't count as a, as a stitch. So this is your first chain. And in the second, we make a single crochet and single crochet in every chain across. So at the end of this row, you have 22 single crochets. And 
and then it's just working back and forward in the back loops only making single crochets until your work fits around your wrist So for me that was 25, uh, that is 25 rows, but just fit every once in a while if your work fits around your wrist and your underarm. If it doesn't fit yet, then work a couple of rows extra. If it fits, then write down how many rows you made because you need another sleeve and you want exactly the same amount of rows. On the other side as well so write that number down so you know how many to make for the other sleeve so I have now 22 single crochet chain one turn my work and then we start in the back loop only just like the band so insert in the back loop yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then single crochet in the back loop only in every stitch across. Repeat this row until your work fits around your wrist like this. So I place my arm on top and then I see if it meets up and then you are done. For me that was 25 rows. Maybe for you it is a little bit more or a little bit less. So make it exactly the size you want and write down how many rows because you need one more sleeve like I said before. Finish your cuff, your, the ribbing for the cuff and then if you are done I'll show you how to make the rest of the sleeve. My cuff is done. I've made 25 rows to cover my whole wrist and now it's time to start the sleeve itself. We stick to the 6mm crochet hook until we reach the elbow. So continue working with the 6mm crochet hook. So our last row of the ribbing is done and then we chain one and then turn your work like this. So you have your ribbing vertically. Now we make the clusters just like we did for the for the body of the of the sweater and for the sleeves we make or I make 11 clusters but you have to eyeball it a little bit if you have more ribbing then you need more clusters if you have less ribbing then you need less clusters so eyeball it a little bit so it isn't too wide or too tight and then you should be fine. So I have 25 rows of ribbing and I make 11 clusters. So if you have um, 27 or 28, then you make 12. Okay. So insert, single crochet and two double crochet. Like this and then jump to the next spot and make single crochet to double crochet then jump to the next let's weave that in later single crochet and two double crochet so that's just the same as you did for the panels so work your way to the other side with making single crochet two double crochet in the same stitch to create your clusters and I made 11 all the way across so it should be a little bit wider than uh, your ribbing because your arm gets bigger when you go up 
So it should be a little bit wider than your ribbing and then you'll then you have the right size. So make your clusters and I'll meet you back when I'm at the end of this row. I have 11 clusters and I need to end my row with a single crochet in the last in the last stitch like this. So here you have row one. For row two, we chain one turn your work. And it is exactly the same like the body of your sweater. In the first single crochet, you make a single crochet and two double crochets. So one cluster like this. Then skip the two double crochet and in the single crochet we make a single crochet and two double crochet again. We know the drill. So and then next single crochet, a single crochet, and two oops, double crochet. So repeat this all the way across and in the last single crochet with a single crochet, chain one, turn your work and work your way back. Repeat this until your work reaches your elbow. For me, that is 11 rows. So this was row one. Here is my row two. I need 11 rows and then I'll uh, meet you back because then we switch from the six millimeter to the eight millimeter crochet hook. If you think your work is too tight when you work it up, so fit every once in a while and then you can see if it fits around your arm. If it becomes too tight, then you can switch to the eight millimeter crochet hook um, earlier. So if you think before you reach your elbow, mm, it is too tight, then switch to your eight millimeter and your work will be bigger as you move on. So work up the amount of rows you need to reach your elbow and then I'll meet you back. I have 11 rows so I switch from my 6 millimeter crochet hook to my 8. Maybe you switched a little bit earlier to your 8 millimeter uh, crochet hook. Uh, you can also switch to a 7 and then later to the 8 millimeter so you increase a little bit slower, but that's totally up to you. Just see what is best for you. So with the eight millimeter crochet hook, we finish the sleeve. So work the same rows back and forth until you reach your armpit. And then your sleeve is done. So work with the eight millimeter crochet hook back and forth until you reach your armpit and then your sleeve is done. And then I'll meet you back. My sleeve is done. I worked up 27 rows on top of the cuff. So make exactly one more. So, so you have two sleeves and then I'll meet you back to put the sweater together. Okay, my two sleeves and my two panels are all done. So it's time to assemble the sweater. Lay the front panel on top of the back panel and choose which side will be your inside and which, which side will be your outside. Make sure the inside are out, the insides of your sweater are out and then place the shoulder seams on top of each other. So here is your neckline and here is your armhole. Not quite yet. Not yet, but there will be your armhole. Here is my sleeve, but that becomes the next step. And then put in stitch markers to keep your shoulder seams in place. And then If you cut long enough tail, you can use your tail to slip stitch or whip stitch or single crochet the shoulder seam together. That's 
totally up to you which method you prefer you can use that i'm going to use slip stitches in this case so you make a slip stitch on your hook slip knot make a slip knot on your hook then pull it through the first stitch and through the first stitch of the opposite side like this leave this these ends in in the end then grab your loop pull up a loop pull tight and chain one you now attach your yarn you can take out this first stitch marker and then we just slip stitch through every stitch across so this is the next stitch of this side and the next stitch of the opposite side yarn over pull up a loop and pull through then insert in the next stitch and in the next stitch yarn over pull through in the next and in the next and make a slip stitch and make a slip stitch just repeat this all the way across take out stitch markers when you reach them then slip stitch All the way across like this and then it looks like this on the inside and in on the outside you have a nice seam so keep working until you are at the end then bind off weave in and do the same on the other side and when you have your both shoulder seams closed, then I'll meet you back to show you how to close the sides and the, attach the sleeves. If your shoulder seams are closed, then it is time to attach the sleeves to the body. Therefore, lay your sweater flat on a table or on the floor like I did in this picture. And then place your sleeves exactly in the middle, one on each side. The two ends of the sleeve to the body of the sweater and attach the middle part of the sleeve to the shoulder seam. And then you can whip stitch the sleeve to the body or you can make uh, slip stitches like I did for the shoulder seam. Or you can make the mattress stitch or single crochet them together. That doesn't matter. Just pick what you prefer and then attach the sleeve to the body. Do the same thing on the other side so you have your two sleeves attached and then we move on to the last step and that is closing the side seams and the sleeves and then we make a ribbing for the neckline and then your sweater is totally done so attach your sleeves any way you prefer and then i'll meet you back if the sleeves are attached to your sweater then fold your work in half like you see here and then underneath the sleeve and at the side you close the seams you use the same technique like you used for the shoulder seam and for attaching the sleeves so close the side and the sleeve make sure your work is still inside out so your seam the seaming is all on the same side at the same side so do that on both sides so your seams are closed and then weave in all your ends and then i'll meet you back to show you how to make the ribbing for the neckline 
when all your seams are closed and you weaved in all of your ends then it's time to make the ribbing for the neckline for the ribbing you make a slip knot and we switch back to our number six millimeter crochet hook and then attach your yarn somewhere around the neckline right side out so we work the ribbing right side out then pull your slip knot through and chain one two three and four and then you work three so in the second chain from the hook you work one two three single crochet so second chain from the hook make a single crochet next single crochet and then the third a single crochet like this then slip stitch in the same stitch as where you attached your yarn so make a slip stitch then slip stitch in the next stitch so in my case it's just a corner like this then turn your work and we have here three one two three stitches for our color for our neckline so insert in the back loop only and make three single crochet so back loop only single crochet in the back loop only single crochet and the last back loop only single crochet then chain one turn your work and make three single crochets in the back loop only so one in the next back loop two so just like you make your you made your ribbing for the band and for the cuffs and number three then slip stitch in the same stitch to attach it to your neckline and a slip stitch in the next stitch to move up to the next row then turn your work and make three back loop single crochets like this so that's one and one in the next and one in the next chain one turn your work again and then in the back loop only three single crochet all the way back and I weave in my end at the same time at the same time two and then the last in the back loop a single crochet then a slip stitch in the same and a slip stitch in the next stitch of your neckline to attach so that's one in the same and a slip stitch in the next and then turn your work and work back and make sure you don't work your two slip stitches but you turn your work skip this these two slip stitches and then make three single crochet in the three stitches of the ribbing so turn your work and then you see here one two one two stitches from the slip stitches and then one two three from your ribbing so we only use the three from the ribbing 
So in the back loop, single crochet. In the back loop, single crochet. And in the last, also in the back loop, and a single crochet. Chain one. Turn your work. Then three in the back loop. One, two, and three. And then slip stitch in the same stitch and in the next of your neckline to attach your ribbing. So slip stitch in the same and slip stitch in the next stitch. Turn your work. Skip those two slip stitches and make three single crochet in the back loop only in the next three stitches. One two and three chain one turn your work and go back again so one in the back loop another one in the back loop only and in the last also one in the back loop only then you see here your neckline and slip stitch in the same and one in the next so slip stitch in the same to attach and one in the next to move up to the next row. Turn your work, skip the two slip stitches and make three single crochet in the back loop only. Chain one, turn your work, go back, three single crochet in the back loop only. And then slip stitch in the same and in the next so repeat this all the way around so you let me show you you make this all the way around until you are at the start again and then i'll show you how to finish off so keep working and i'll meet you back when the whole round is done Okay, I finished the border for my neckline. I only need to close this part. If you find that the neckline ripples when you work it up, then you can choose to pick a hook size, a size smaller than the six millimeter. So it is a little bit tighter and your neckline falls nicer and flat. So that's a tip. If you have a rippled neckline then fix that by picking a hook size a size smaller okay for the side I have my last four single crochet in the back loop only and now I need to slip stitch it to the bottom to the sweater just like you did for the whole row and then yarn over cut your yarn and pull through to bind off then we have to close this gap and we can do that by turning your work inside out so this is the inside facing you then take your tapestry needle And then, so this is the outside, turn it inside out, so you have the two ends from the inside. And then just pick a stitch on this side, from inside to out, and pick a stitch on that side. Pick a stitch on this side, and pick a stitch on that side. Pick a stitch on this side. And one on that side. So do that four times. So you have all the stitches closed. Then pull. And if you turn your work, you see it is nice and closed. So. 
So then, bind off the weave in this end. So you have no more ends sticking out. And this is it. Your Isla sweater is finished. If you like this sweater, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you aren't subscribed yet and hit the notification bell so you never miss another video. If you have any ideas or questions, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.